For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2015 Midwinter Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Wednesday evening, December the 30th, 2015. Jerry McGee is the speaker of the evening, teaching on being scattered. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For yea, I will begin to speak to thee. Oh, in ways that you have not noticed before. And I will I will make your discernment more keen so that yes. you can hear me more clearly, says the Lord. You will have dreams in the night. You will have visions in the night. And you will be able to know the meaning of these and you will not wonder what they mean. But I will give you direction through these dreams and through these visions. If I can take Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus and warn them in a dream to, and, and the flower men to, uh, uh, to go another direction. Do you not think that I can do the same for you? Oh, but I would say to you to look for me, to lead your ear in to hear, yes. to lead your mind in to be at rest when you, go to, when you go to bed at night so that I can fill it, so that I can fill it with things of me and things that are to come and things that you are to do. And I would say to you that the time is indeed very short yes. and the time is now you must begin to prepare yourself spiritually, even in a greater degree. You must ask for greater discernment. You must ask for you to be fine-tuned, and I, the Lord your God, will fine-tune my people. I will fine-tune them, and you will know by even just the slightest breeze what the direction that I am taking you. But I'm saying to you, you must take stock of your life right now. You must look at the things that are hindering you and lay them aside. The weights that have held you back, lay them aside and I will meet you in that juncture. I will meet you in that place, says the Lord, and I will lead you out. I will lead you out. I am big enough to take care of any needs that you have. I am big enough to protect you. I am big enough to go through the fire with you. I am big enough to do anything that you need done. And I would say to you, the persecution may come your way, but I would say that there it will be no, nothing happen to you but I will not go with you through that temptation. I will not go with you through that trial. And you will be drawn to me in a way and we will become so close and so intimate that you won't even know that when I am there, you will not come. I will be a constant companion to you. I will be there all the time. I will be there with you. I will, you will just automatically will become an automatic thing and you won't have to stand in my presence like you do this night because my presence will be in, inside of you and my Holy Spirit will be guiding you, says the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah, Lord, we receive, we receive, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, what I want to share tonight is on being scattered. Um, the world calls it, or well, some of the things the world's called it is MPD, multiple personality disorder, um, disassociative identity disorder, all kinds of disassociative. Um, let me pray first. Lord, I just come to you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for your word. I thank you for your anointing that's upon your word. I thank you, Lord, that you said if we abide in your word, we, and we'll know the truth, and the truth will set us free. And Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that even if I say it wrong, your Holy Spirit will interpret it correctly to their ears. Let their ears hear it right. 
I bind you, Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places. I bind you in the heavenly places and on this earth, forbid you to work with, communicate with, make contact with anyone on this earth or in the heavenly places to work divination against us. This meeting, Meryl Barbara, Patty Kevin, every person at this camp. Uh, and all of our loved ones at home, in Jesus' name. We break your power. We bind every spirit that would not confess Jesus Christ as Lord. We cover this place with the blood of Jesus. We hold up the shield of faith. We bind and break every word of death, word of iniquity, curse, assignment, satanic ritual spoken over us this meeting, Patty Kevin, over Meryl Barbara, over all of us, and everything that concerns us, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you're in charge and you're in control, and we give you control, in Jesus' name. But the world in psychology calls it multiple personality disorders or they changed it to disassociative divinity disorders or all kinds of disassociative problems where a person will switch from personality to personality. And the, the real simple form of it, I heard Joyce Meyer say this, and I think this is a simple form of multiple personalities. She was talking about, you know, going to church on the way to church. You know, she slapped the kid, kicked the dog, uh, yelled at her husband. But the minute she got to church, it was, hello, hallelujah, praise the Lord. That's a form of it. That's a simple form of it. But an extreme form of it is, of course, satanic ritual abuse. It comes in through all kinds of abuse, uh, hardness and things that happen to people. But the extreme case is satanic ritual abuse where it's like switching channels on a TV. They switch from personality to personality. And I spent about 10 years ministering to a girl who had, who had come out of Satanism, plus she had uh, been a Satanist. And God taught me uh, some of these principles uh, just by, uh, by taking her through deliverance. And so uh, it, the Lord taught me it was like peeling an onion. But she, for example, I might bake her a chocolate cake because she said chocolate cake would be her favorite cake. And then when she'd get there, she said, I like lemon cake. I don't like chocolate cake. And the next time, it'd be strawberry cake. Every personality has its own identity. And that you have at least two uh, personalities, uh, which would be the simple form of it, but it'd be multiple personalities. I might be driving along with her in a car. Maybe we go to lunch somewhere, and I'd drive along in a car, and something would uh, cause her to switch, and all of a sudden, she'd be trying to get out of the car, and I'd be trying to drive with her, my hand, her in a neck lock, trying to drive. And why do you try? Why are you calling me Ruth? My name's Dorothy or something. And so I learned about multiple personalities. And each one of these came into some ritual where she either was bonded to somebody through a ritual, through sexual sin, through murdering somebody, or somebody watching somebody be killed, or in the pain that she went through. Uh, a demon would would appear to her and tell her that if you let me use your body, then you won't feel this pain. So, um, you know, psychology calls this alters. They say there's people inside of people, just demons. And they're correct about it being alters because each one of these places, if I don't turn to God in my pain, I turn to a false God. And each one of these places or these breaches is, is is an altar to a false God. And so they're all demons, psychology, they try to integrate them all. And I tell you, people are really screwed up, at, pardon the expression, <laughs> at the end of whatever they do to them to try to integrate them to be one person. One day I was listening to a, a, t- a tape by Bob Larson, and he would say, Now, what is your name? Talking to the demon. My name is Charlie. Well, how many are, of you are in there? And so... That doesn't work, but I can tell you, I can testify what God taught me with my friend was to uh, pray with her. And uh, a lot of times when I'd start praying, the Holy Spirit would switch her back to whatever age she was hurt. Because she didn't know, she had no memory of what had hurt her. But she would switch back to whatever age she was hurt. And see, I had no experience with... um, uh, the, the Holy Spirit just taught me. And I the first time when she switched, I thought it was demonic. And then I realized that in the natural, she couldn't tell you what happened to her because all the memories were blocked. 
But when the Holy Spirit would switch her to whatever age she was hurt, I would ask her what happened, and she could tell me, and I'd lead her in repentance and lead her to forgive, and then I'd cast it out, and then she'd come back to herself, and she'd say, I didn't do anything crazy, did I? <laughs> and so the Lord taught me about the breaches, about switching. from It's like switching channels on a TV. And I'm going to try to explain this a little bit. It's been a long time since I've done this, but um, we're body, soul, and spirit. And it's, it's after, that's a picture... That's okay. That's a picture of our human spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit, but it's there was a human spirit that was born in our bodies. And so, uh, in go to the next one, the next one, Deborah. So we're body, soul, and spirit. And so in the soul realm here, Jerry, 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 take okay. the microphone, please. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Hope I don't. Well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but anyway, in here is your mind, your will, and emotions. This represents your body. This is your human spirit that joins with the Holy Spirit. And so, um, in the satanic rituals, or any kind of occultic rituals, or New Age cult, back it up, Deborah, Deborah, back it up. What they do is they destroy the personality of that person, and then they begin to rebuild demonic things through satanic rituals, through binding them to um, a demon or to a person. I remember once taking this girl home with, with me to um, for lunch, and a, and a demon manifested in her and said, Why do you keep calling me Ruth? My name is Michelle. And I said, Your name is Michelle is Ruth. I already know. <laughs> I pray with you every day. That was how ignorant I was to what it was. And then finally I realized that wasn't really her. And so I bound the, the demon that had taken her body over. And she said she, later she said she could hear me, but I, I said, Ruth, I call you back in the name of Jesus. I lose holy angels to bring her back because when this happens, the demon, <clears throat> the demon checks in and she checks out because the demon takes her over. It's the same with epilepsy. A demon has taken a person over. And so, uh, anyway, come to find out, um, I called her back and I said, ask the Holy Spirit to show you how this Michelle got in you. And what had happened through a ritual is they made her uh, have sex with this person. They did a, they did a blood transfusion. To, they changed out the blood and then the girl was murdered. And so for, the way I could get the demon out was to lead her to forgive, break soul ties, renounce and forgive every person involved, cast the spirit out. And that was probably the most vicious demon that I ever dealt with uh, in her. And later I said, you know, that makes me not want to take blood, a blood transfusion. She said, oh, the, the Satanists don't need the blood. The, the reason they give the blood or they sell the blood is they don't need the money, but that's one way they transfer demons is through blood. But anyway, that was kind of extreme. But now just do the next one, Deborah. But just in a normal situation, this is say you haven't been ritual abused, say you've been traumatized, do the next one, Deborah. It's like we're born with breaches. And this is really a picture of the wall of Jerusalem. In, in Nehemiah chapter 1, the whole, I mean, not, all of Nehemiah is about rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. And so this is our spiritual wall. And so deliverance is rebuilding and repentance is rebuilding the spiritual wall, like, like the wall of Jerusalem. And in each of these places is a breach. And in all of these places, you could call it a doorway. Okay, the next one, Deborah. And so this comes in through, one more, one more. This comes in through the generational iniquities of the forefathers, the things that happen to us that we do, that we don't repent of, the things that are that uh, other people do to us to hurt us. Every time it opens us up to another doorway, if we don't forgive, we let the sun go down on our anger, plus all the movies you've seen, all the demonic words that have been planted, whatever you've stored down here in your heart becomes a breach of the heart. If you don't turn to God in your pain, you're turning to a false God in all these areas. And so when I said in satanic ritual abuse, all these are altars, and, and psychology calls it altars, but um, they say it's people in people, but it's, wherever there's an altar, there's demons. When we worship demons, we worship 
um, worship idols, we worship demons. And so in all these areas is a doorway, is an open door or a breach. And so, next one, if we don't deal with it, then every place we have an idol, we have a wounded spirit, and all of these are button pushers. And so, one more, Deborah. If you don't deal with it, just keep doing it. Eventually, it works out into your body to, to cancer or any kind of sickness and disease if you don't deal with it. And that's why we always ask people to ask God to show you the spiritual root, the doorway, because when you, now just, um, as you deal with them, see God heals the breaches. And of course, through soul ties, you get a part of whoever you have a soul tie with. And all those breaches, you've got a soul tie with whoever hurt you, whoever you sinned with, uh, whoever ritualized you. And um, one more difference. And so through soul ties, you get scattered. And uh, you can't see a soul tie with a human eye. But through soul ties, you can get the sickness of whoever you have a soul tie with. You get the, the, um, the familiar spirits. You get the demons. Uh, one big way that people get soul ties is through sexual sin. Through sexual sin, you know, you take a little child, for example, and they're molested when they're a child and they're not acting perverted. All of a sudden you see them trying to masturbate and do sexual things because they're defiled by whoever molested them. But um, the world calls it multiple personality disorders, disassociative identity disorders, but God's Word calls it being scattered. And so we're going to take the, the biblical definition. And so, as I said, it can range from very mild to just having two personalities just because, say, you were molested. Or say you get into drugs. Well, every time experience, every experience you've had in drugs or alcohol where you've had sex with people you don't even remember, you get scattered through soul ties and through the trauma of it. In Isaiah chapter 1, it says, Listen, O heavens, and... And here, O earth, for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord speaks. Sons I have reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. An ox knows its owner, and a, and a donkey its master's manger, manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. A last sinful nation, people weighted down with iniquity, offsprings of evildoers who act corruptly. They've abandoned the Lord. They've despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away from Him. And you know, we all are offsprings of evildoers because of the generational iniquities of the forefathers. The Scripture says that the sins of the fathers pass on to the children to the third and fourth generation. And that's 30 or 40 forefathers where illegitimacy and incest goes 10 generations, which is about 2,040, I think, forefathers. And if you don't break it, every day it'll loop, another, it'll, it'll loop another day. And so it says in Isaiah uh, 1, chapter, verse 5, where will, you, where will you be stricken again as you continue in your rebellion? The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. And that word sick is not a picture of a sick person, but a person who's been flogged in the head. That's what it means in the Hebrew. It says, from the sole of your foot, even to the head... There is no soundness in it, only bruises, welts, and raw wounds. Well, you say, well, you know, I don't have bruises, welts, and raw wounds, but in the spirit realm, you have bruises, welts, and raw wounds. You can't see it with the naked eye, but it says that there's only no soundness in it, only bruises, welts, and raw wounds. No one to, to banish or soften with oil. Your land is desolate, which means to grow numb, uh, to um, desolate, to stupefy, or to devastate. That's what that means. It says your you your your cities are burned with fire. Now Jesus told the disciples, He said, "A city on a hill cannot be he- hidden." So He was He was referring to us as a city. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. It says. Your cities are burned with fire. Your field, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, that you're building your house and your field. Your field, strangers are devouring them in your midst. Uh, It's desolation as overthrown by strangers. 
the daughter of Zion, that's a church member, is like a uh, shelter in a vineyard, like a watchman's hut in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. And rebellion opens us up to mental problems, all forms of mental problems, because he said your head is sick from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. No one to bandage you or soften you with oil, only bruises, welts, and raw wounds. It's a picture of a person that's been flogged in the head. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 says, uh, because of disobedience to the voice of God and his commandments, then he lists some curses, and I'm just going to name a few. In verse 20, the Lord will send upon you curses, confusion, and rebuke in all you undertake to do until you're destroyed and until you perish quickly on the account of evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord shall cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You'll go out with them one way and flee seven ways. Well, how do you flee seven ways? You see, you get scattered. The scripture says that you'll run when no one is chasing you. The sound of a driven leaf will make you run. And so that's how you get scattered. The enemy comes against you one way and you flee seven ways. The blessing is the enemy comes against you one way and he flees seven ways. The scripture says in Deuteronomy 15, one of the blessings that the enemy will see that you're called by the name of the Lord and they'll be afraid of you. It says you'll go out one way and flee against them and even and will flee seven ways before them. And you'll be an example of terror to all the kingdoms of the earth. The Lord will, the Lord will smite you with madness, and that word means craziness in the Hebrew. State of being insane, and that's the, dic- the definition of it in the dictionary. State of, of, of being insane, insanity, mad, um, folly, frenzy, rage. It says also blindness and will and bewilderment of heart. And so eye problems, our blindness, that's a curse. And if you've got eye problems, you need to break the curse. Deuteronomy 28, verse 29 says, You'll, You will grope at noon as the blind man gropes in darkness. And that's the, time, the brightest time of the day. And you'll not prosper in all your ways, but you'll only be oppressed and robbed continually with none to save you. And I can tell you, I'm dealing with someone right now that doesn't believe in curses or demons or the devil, but they're robbed continually, oppressed and robbed continually, and yet the stubbornness will not let them uh, see the truth that sets them free. So all I can do is pray that God breaks through um, the, the lies. Oppressed in the dictionary means to be burdened with cruel and unjust um, Impositions are, um, I can't read this word, it means to, to be burdened down with harsh, uh, exercise, uh, harsh excises of authority and power. It means to be oppressed by totalitarian, totalitarian, yes, total, y'all, did y'all hear her? <laughs> that means to be controlled by a state, a government, a person or a group, or another person, basically to be controlled by demons. Because demons carry out the curses, and holy angels carry out the blessings. And it means to be, um, to lie heavily on the mind. It means to, um, to weigh down like in sleep, or like weariness does. It means to put down, subdue, or suppress. It means to press upon or press against. Deuteronomy 28, verse 34 says, You shall be driven mad or insanity by the sight of what you see. That could also be a route to eye problems, is maybe some forefather went crazy because of what they saw. All these things that I'm, um, I'm expressing about our eyes are things that uh, I've, I've dealt with and I'm still dealing with them still in asking the Lord a person is scattered um, he may feel some or all of these symptoms flogged in the head uh, memory lapses memory problems alienated uh, confined confused loose in the head 
don't have to have all of them, but some of them spaced out. Um, find it hard to get your thoughts together. You don't fit in. Uh, feel mixed up, damned, uneasy, uh, confounded, confused, disoriented, divided in the head, cut off, disconnected, memory lapses, blank mind, uh, retardation, rejection, uh, on the outside looking in. Uh, those are just some of the things that a person might feel. Um, the memory lapses would be if you switch channels to channel four and you're extreme multiple. When you switch over, you forgot what you did on the last channel. Matthew 12:30. Jesus said, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. It says that also in Luke 12. And he's, I'm sorry, Luke 11, verse 23. And Jesus is really talking about deliverance. If you're not gathering with me, you're scattering. You go to psychology, you go to the world for answers, and every time you go, you not only have the problem you went with, but now you're scattered in that area too. To scatter means to drive or to throw, to pour out, disperse. Uh, it means to uh, separate or remove from one area to another. It means to be expended, which is like a, a, a lamp, uh, using up all the oil and it burning out. Um, and, and Jesus said hirelings scatter now a hireling is a pastor a teacher a, um, a shepherd a prophet a false prophet that doesn't teach a person that the wolf is coming doesn't teach them about sin holiness, righteousness and let that be um, let that be your, your plumb line if you're sitting under any kind of teacher Make sure what they're teaching lines up with the Word of God. Uh, make sure they're teaching you the Word of God. Make sure they're dealing with sin. And make sure they're teaching you that without holiness, no one's going to see the Lord. And in John 10, verse 12, this is what Jesus said. He who's a hireling and not a shepherd who is not the owner of the sheep beholds the wolf, that's the devil, coming and flees. And the wolf, wolf snatches them and scatters them. You know, it's sad to say that here in America you can find very few true shepherds. And churches that where there's a true shepherd are not going to get very big because they're dealing with sin. They're teaching people to deny their self and take up their cross and follow the Lord. And so if you're in a place like that and you're not hearing about dealing with your sin, you need to go someplace else. And pray that God shows you that place. But it's really sad, the condition of the church in America. You know, I believe that David Wilkerson was probably one of the few prophets here in this country uh, that was well known. But do you know that in other countries, no one ever asked him to come? I mean, in, in this country, he was hardly ever asked to preach. Because he, he taught that we are, that men are to repent. And that's the, every true prophet in the Word of God didn't just tickle your ears about what was going to happen on Wall Street. But every true prophet in the Word of God taught that men must repent. From Jesus and every prophet. And so if they're not teaching you about sin, and they're, they're just telling your fortune is what they're doing. And some of these prophets are, it's just, I know there was one that's dead now, but he was making women undress while he prophesied over them. Well known. And so, Lord, we ask you to take, take us to where true shepherds are. We get scattered through satanic ritual abuse. We get scattered through, you know, if you have African-American heritage, through all the trauma and stuff that you were put through, um, your forefathers were put through. And see, that trauma, you can, you can have arrested development that passes down or you can be scattered passing down through whatever your forefathers were involved in. And if you have if you if there's mental illness in your family and there's perversion and there's addictions and there's alcoholism, you can almost always be sure that back there somewhere was Freemasonry or Satan worship or witchcraft. I have a lot of uh, people call me and say, you know, I'm being attacked by people who are putting curses on me. Well, the only way they can do a curse is if there's a breach in your heart, if there's a doorway. 
And so if you're getting hit, you have to say, okay, Lord, why am I getting hit in this area? And find out how the, how the door got open, and then through repentance, you close it. And then it's kind of like you can be likened like to maybe a house with all the windows open with no screens. Well, things fly in. But deliverance in repentance is shutting those windows and those doorways so that no enemy can get to you. And I learned that over the years because in dealing with this girl that had come out of Satanism, I mean, they were threatening our life. You know, we're going to get you and that white-haired lady. And I can tell you they're all dead now and nobody ever bothered me at all. I'm sure they shot a lot of curses at me. But if one hit, I'd say, okay, Lord, why? A curse without a cause cannot lie. You know, when uh, when Balaam was trying to get um, Balak was trying to get Balaam to curse Israel, he he said, I can't. You know, God said, you can't curse what I've blessed. But but Balaam taught Balak to get the children of Israel into sexual sin, and then they were cursed. Then God was angry at them. So sin opens the door. We get scattered through the curses of rebellion, the curses uh, through soul ties. Through childhood trauma, if you grew up in a traumatic, dysfunctional family where you were rejected, you weren't loved, you weren't nurtured, you weren't protected, you weren't guided, you weren't directed, every every one of those places is a pl- place that caused a, ble- a breach down in your in your soul. But the good news is, the more deliverance you get, the more repentance you get, the more truth you see get that sets you free, then those breaches get cl- get closed. And that's why I tell people that come here for prayer, you keep coming to Blake Hamilton Bible Camp. And and we're not saying this is the only place, and we're not saying we have a corner on everything. But I watch people that I've been praying for for over the years, and those that are on the prayer team can tell you that, you know, you pray for somebody one year, you come back and their whole countenance is different. And you see how their life is changing. Many of you who have been over and over and over can say, you know, my life has changed because... I've continued to deal with sin in my life. And I'm so thankful for Lake Hamilton Bible Camp because here you learn about your sin. And that's why you have uh, demonic problems is because of sin. Um, these, uh, we get scattered through childhood trauma, through being molested, through angry, raging parents, through rejection, through alcoholism, through drug addiction, uh, through uh, fear. You know, when, when people run when they're afraid. Abuse, sexual, uh, emotional, physical, mental abuse, spiritual abuse through fear, molestation, incest, generational iniquities of the forefathers. Uh, you know, many of you, if you had this kind of forefathers that were into everything, I mean, you were born with many, many breaches in your in your soul. Um through ritual abuse, through the lack of nurturing, which includes being protected, loved, disciplined, through guidance, being provided for, protected, loved, hugged, acceptance, uh, through mercy and grace of your parents. But what is so sad is very few people ever grow up with with a family that's not dysfunctional. The more dysfunctional your family was, the more demonic breaches that you have. And these are just like holes in your heart where the enemy, you know, like uh, God puts a hedge of protection around us. It says in, 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 um, in Psalms 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God will abide under the shadow and protection of the Almighty. And you can picture that as a big umbrella. That As long as you're under that, you're safe. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such there's no law. Outside of that umbrella, there's a law. And the demons are the executors of that law. And if you grew up with generations that were dysfunctional, alcoholic, abusers, people that abandoned in their, abandoned their children or mistreated their children, they were born outside of God's umbrella because mother and daddy were not under God's umbrella. But praise God... It says in in Proverbs 18 that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run into it and are safe. And it's more real than this building we're in. It's a spiritual place that you can run into. And so God wants us to live and abide under his shadow of the Almighty. Praise the Lord. And so um, 
uh, that comes in through making forefathers or us making covenants to false gods, uh, through Satan worship, witchcraft, Freemasonry, occultic rituals. Um, basically, it just boils down to sin. The sins of our forefathers, our own sin that we don't take to the cross. And when we let the sun go down on our anger, every time we let the sun go down on our anger, it causes there to be another breach in our heart. And so um, that's why we cannot let the sun go down on our anger, that we've got till sundown to deal with our sin. Or otherwise, the Bible says you give the devil an opportunity. And we all have to deal with the generational iniquities of the forefathers. Because, say, say you're walking uprightly, and you've dealt with everything. Well, and your children have a, or your mate uh, came out of a dysfunctional family. Well, your kids get their demons. They get all of our demons. Uh, our, uh, our kids get our demons, and we get our parents' demons, and we're born with demons. And so, but repentance drives the enemy out of our life. Okay, here's some scriptures of, uh, that tell us who gets scattered. Um, those that build towers get scattered. And that's a picture of human effort. And I don't know if you're like me, but that's something that I'm trying to break out of my life is doing things in the flesh rather than doing them in the spirit. In Genesis uh, 11, verse 4, And they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower that will reach up to heaven and make a name for ourselves so that we won't get scattered. And because of that, God said, so, so then I scattered them from, one, from over the face of the earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, the name was called Babel, because the Lord had, had confused their language. And from there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the earth, the whole earth. We get scattered because we're a friend of the world. Uh, it says in um, James chapter 4 that if we're a friend of the world we're an enemy of God and so God's enemies get scattered Psalms 68 verse 1 says let God arise and let thine enemies be scattered and, that, and let those who hate thee flee before you before thee Psalms 81.15 says, Those who hate the Lord pretend obedience. Are you a person that pretends you're obedient and you're really not? Has secret sins that no one else knows about? Psalms 83.2 says, Those who exalt themselves hate the Lord. And then being unfaithful to the Lord, those who are unfaithful to the Lord get scattered. And that's Nehemiah 1 verse 8. And nine, it says, "Remember the word which uh, which you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you're unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. And if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though those of you who have been scattered to the to the utmost parts of remote parts of the, of the heavens, I will gather from there, and I will." Bring them to the place which I have chosen for my name to dwell. We get scattered for the lack of spiritual food and um, not being trained up in the way we should go. The Bible says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, but train them up in the way that they should go. Otherwise, we get trained up in the way we shouldn't go. And Job 4, 1 says, The lion perishes for lack of prey and the whelps of the lion are scattered. Those who encamp against the righteous get scattered. Psalms 53 verse 5. They were in great fear where no fear had been, for God scattered the bones of them who encamped against you. So if anybody camps against you and they hate you, they get scattered. You put them to shame, the Lord. You put them to shame because God has rejected them. Those who delight in war get scattered. And that's Psalm 68, verse 30. He scattered the peoples who delight in war. That's a person that wants to fight all the time and live in contention and strife. Those who do iniquity get scattered. Psalms 92, verse 9. 
For behold, thine enemies, O Lord, behold, thy enemies will perish, and all who do, do iniquity will sca- get scattered. The daughters of Moab get scattered. And that's in Isaiah, verse 16, verse 2. It says, and you know, Moab, uh, in um, Isaiah 16, it also talks about, I know the pride of Moab, the arrogance of Moab, and Moab was the, Ill- was the incestuous born child of Lot. And the Moabites were his descendants. And so that could be incest, for sure, because he was a product of incest. Um, pride. It says like like fleeting birds or scattered nestlings, the daughters of Moab will be at the ford of Arnon. And the, a ford is like in a stream. It's like a shallow place a person can walk through. And the word Arnon means roaring stream. And so these people were scattered in shallow water. Now, they weren't even in the, ro- the roaring stream, but they were in shallow water. And, you know, it'd be good to go back and renounce all the ites, the Moabites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, and all the ites, because we're, um, we can have some of them in our bloodline. And they worship false gods, to, to look up the false gods of these um, Moabites. We get scattered because of stupid shepherds. And this includes pastors, teachers, false prophets. And, you know, parents are a shepherd. They shepherd their children, or they're supposed to. Jeremiah 10, verse 21. For the shepherds have become stupid and have not sought the Lord. They have not uh, prospered, and their flock is scattered. Jeremiah 23, 2. For thus says the Lord concerning the shepherds who are... um, teaching my people you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not attended to them behold I'm about to attend to you for your evil there's going to be a lot of pastors in hell because they didn't tell their congregation about repenting of their sin Ezekiel 34 verse 4 those who are sickly you have not uh, strengthened the disease you've not healed. Nowadays, they send you to the doctor or they fuss at you for not taking your psychiatric medicine. Or they have a counselor, a psychological counselor. And personally, I don't like to sit under anybody that has had a psychological background because the Bible says, see to it, no one takes you captive by the philosophies of the world, by the elemental principles of the world rather than, than Christ. And so you get taken captive by psychology. And you say, well, you know, they're really Christian psychologists and they're really, and there are some godly Christian. I'm not saying there isn't. But you take a pitcher of water and put a little dab of poison in it and it's still poison. It's mixture. And and God doesn't like mixture. It says the diseased you've not healed, the broken you've not bound up, the scattered you have not brought back. And you have not sought for the lost, but with force and severity you've dominated them. Ezekiel 34, verse 5. And they were scattered for a lack of shepherd, and they became food for every beast of the field and were scattered. And beasts of the field, birds of the air, types and shadows of the powers of darkness. For example, uh, in in the New Testament it says that... um, Paul fought with the wild beast of Ephesus, and he wasn't fought. He wasn't fighting with people. He was fighting with the demons in the people. And um, birds of the air. You remember the parable of the sower, where the the sower sows the words and the uh, sows the word of God, and the birds come. And then later, uh, Jesus explains that parable that Satan was the birds that stole the, the seed of the word of God. And in that parable, you know, uh, Brother Howard uh, talks some about that parable, but there's four types of people. There's a, there's a type of person that hears the word, and the birds get it, and they carry it away, and it's a person that I don't even believe all that. And the second one is he receives the seed among thorns where the worries, cares, pleasures, and the riches of the world um, uh, cause the word to not produce. That's the second type of person that receives the seed of God's word, 
Everybody says he's saved, but he's not because the worries, cares, and the pleasures of the world choke the word and it doesn't bear fruit. And the third type is a, the seed that's sown on stony hard ground. And the minute persecution comes, which is the sun, it says that the minute the sun hits it, uh, it withers away. And that's a picture of a person that receives the word, but when he finds he has to, to uh, die to his flesh, it says that he's persecuted, pers- the word persecutes him, and he falls away. But the only soil that produces 30, 60, and 100 fold, that's the only one saved out of the whole three that accepted the Lord. And the church is full of people that are not willing to deny their self and take up their cross. And I'm not saying I have it all together because I don't even, maybe don't even know the first thing about it. But I'm, I'm working on it. So, um, your cross is any place that crosses God's will in your life. They get scattered because of spiritual harlotry and spiritual adultery. In Jeremiah 50 it says, Israel is a scattered flock. The lions have driven them away. The first one who devoured them was the king of Assyria, which is the type of the devil. And the second one was Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which you read, you read all of Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51, and you see it's about spiritual adultery. It's about the church that commits spiritual adultery against the bridegroom Jesus. And it goes on to say, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, swallows me down like a monster. And of course, 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, drink down, gulp down, and swallow up. So these are types and shadows of Satan. Uh, we get scattered because we hate the presence of the Lord, and we don't regard the true priest. We get scattered. Lamentations 4, verse 4, 6, The presence of the Lord has scattered them. He will not... He will not continue to regard them, for they have um, they did not honor the priest, nor did they uh, favor the elders. We get scattered because of our evil deeds. Ezekiel 30, verse 19. Also, I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the lands, according to their way, according to their ways and their deeds. I will judge them. Pride scatters us. Luke 1, 51. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered all those who are proud in the thoughts of their heart. Ezekiel 36, verse 19. And I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the lands according to their ways and their deeds. I judged them. You know, the world, psychology, medication cannot heal you. Only Jesus can heal you. I mean, you can go to the world and they can patch you up, they can shift it around, they can medicate you, but if you don't get to what caused that breach and deal with it, it's going to work out. I don't care who you go, where you go. If you don't deal with your sin, you'll end up dying if you don't deal with it God's way. Plus, you get scattered through whatever they do to you. And so... Instead of having one problem now, you've got all the other problems that were complicated through uh, medical mistakes and through prescription drugs. Prescription drugs is the number three or four killer of people in the United States. Medical mistakes and prescription drugs. Every drug has a side effect that becomes another disease. I've discovered that, that repentance heals me quicker than anything. And I thank the Lord for that. I thank God for His grace. Nahum 3.18 says, Your shepherds are sleeping, O king of Assyria. Your nobles are lying down. Your people are scattered on the mountains, and there's no one to gather them. You know, if we want our ears tickled, God raises up for us shepherds. It says in in Zechariah 11.6, it says, If you want your ears tickled, God will give you that kind of a pastor. It says, for I'm going to raise up shepherds in the land who will not care for the perishing, uh, seek the scattered and the broken, or sustain the one that's standing, but 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 will devour the fat sheep and cut off their hooves. And then God gives a solution, and read all of Deuteronomy 30, but I'm just going to read parts of it. 
So it will be when all of this comes upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before you, and you called them to mind in the nations where I, the Lord, has banished you. And if you return to the Lord and you obey him with all your heart and soul, according to all that I command you this day and your sons, then I, the Lord, will return you from captivity and have compassion on you and will gather you again from all the places where the Lord your God has scattered you. Moreover, the Lord your God, in verse 6, Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind that you may live. So I, in verse 15, So I have said before you this day, life and prosperity, death and adversity. And I command you today to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body and keep his covenants and his statutes and his commandments that you may live and multiply in the land where the Lord, so that the Lord may, may bless you there where you're entering to possess it. And you know, wherever there's a breach, there's not going to be complete healing and we're not going to be completely healed until we go to heaven. But the, the breaches are, have to be healed one by one. And God has taught me that the problem will always point you to the next thing God wants to heal. Whatever problem you're going through is pointing you to the next breach he wants to heal. So you can go and try to superficially heal it to the world, but you still got the breach. Plus, you have all the breaches that medical caused. So stand up and ask the Lord to show you... Um, if you grew up with trauma, I think what the Lord would have you do is to just go back through your childhood and forgive your parents for the dysfunction, all the dysfunction you can see, all the problems that you went through growing up. Uh, from, the, from the earliest that you can remember, start forgiving your parents. And don't just say, I forgive them for all these things. To get healed and delivered, each thing has to be specifically confessed. And that's how I ministered to this girl that came out of Satanism. Every time there was, there was so much happening in her, this is how the Lord taught me, there was so much happening in her life, every day was a, was a trauma. And there was so many things going on that I couldn't have dealt with all of it. So I would deal with whatever the problem was that day. I'd find out how the breach got there, what happened, what ritual she was put through, led her in repentance, broke soul ties, broke the words that were spoken over her, broke the words they made her speak, and she was delivered, delivered, delivered. And um, I've seen these people that psychologists try to integrate, and I'm telling you, they are just, they're messes. And I can tell you the Lord had worked in her life. Every time I would do this, she would change for good in that particular area. Now, if, if every time she came to me was with the same problem, I would have realized, hey, she's not getting set free. But, every, but I never had to deal with the same thing more than one time. And God would set her free and was changing her from glory to glory to glory. And I can tell you today, when I first started ministering to her, I mean, the Satanists were coming out of the woodwork to kill her. They were flattening her tires. They were putting holes, these little pushpin holes in the walls. They put pushpins in her body to track her. Um, of all the people I've ever known, I've ever ministered to, multiply it by 100, and that's the torture that that poor girl went through. And she's my friend today. And she's walking in wisdom. And even though she still needs delivered from a whole bunch of things, the Satanists leave her alone. They said she'd be dead when she was 55 and she's going on 60 now. And she's probably the most selfless person I've ever known in my whole life. She's selfish with herself. But anyway, people would condemn me. They'd say, boy, you need to leave her alone. She's ruining your life. I had so many people but me to not want me to help her and it was just the enemy but I can tell you today I told her the other day I said had I not had you not been in my life it's better today because I knew you and I was real careful to know she wasn't destroying me which a lot of these people can be detention getters um, and they can actually absolutely destroy a person 
And I told her from the very get-go, I'm telling you, I'll help you. I'll risk my life to help you. But I am not going to let me, I'm not going to be killed because you're compromising. You're going to do exactly what I say. And she did. And so, but I can't tell you all the backlash that I had from people telling me that, boy, she was tricking me and all kinds of stuff. But um, my faith grew from knowing her. So I thank the Lord for that friend. And she's, she's the kind of friend, if I was in Alaska and I needed help, she'd crawl to get me, to help me. <laughs> so, Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you for the things that we go through that are, are learning experiences. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask you, Lord, to let us know the truth that sets us free. I pray, Lord, that you begin to uh, flash back each person's childhood, how they grew up, uh, information about their forefathers, if they were alcoholics, drug addicts, or whatever. And, Lord, uh, just begin to forgive your parents one for one thing at a time. And then when you're through, sit down and we'll do deliverance. So that God can gather you from all the places where you've been scattered through these breaches. You can get these breaches, some of them healed today. But it's a process that will continue on to you in eternity. And that's what it means to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Begin to deal with all of the doorways. So Lord, I ask for the truth that sets me free. Sets them free, Lord. I bind them to the truth that sets them free. So start forgiving. Because forgiveness is what holds you captive to them. And until there's forgiveness, that breach, that doorway will stay open. Father, in the name of Jesus, I forgive my parents. I forgive every person you've shown me that's hurt me. I forgive my forefathers for not dealing with their sin. Lord, in Jesus' name, I break satanic vows, those and covenants that my forefathers made through Satanism, witchcraft, voodoo, the works of the occult, Freemasonry. I break the power of that over my life and over the lives of my children. I nullify, everybody pray, I nullify and make void every word of death, every word of iniquity, every curse assignment, satanic ritual spoken over me by my forefathers, that that my forefathers spoke, that I've spoke over me uh, and my children in the name of Jesus. I declare that everything that leaves me has to leave my children in the name of Jesus. I declare that traffic is one way and that's out in the name of Jesus. Lord, I close every door that you've shown me. I forgive my parents for everything you've shown me. I forgive every person who's ever hurt me in the name of Jesus. I break satanic vows, oaths, and covenants that I can never come to Christ. And if I do, it will be met with calamity, upheaval, sickness, death, poverty. In the name of Jesus, I break blood covenants. I break uh, covenants of death in the name of Jesus. Lord, I break soul ties with my parents and every person I've sinned with. Um, I break soul ties with drugs, with alcohol, with the people I've sinned with under the influence of drugs and alcohol. I break every word, curse, spell, hex, vex, charm, incantation, divination, assault, assignment, attachment, voodoo magic, black magic, uh, roots spoken uh, by any person uh, over me in the name of Jesus. Any that I've spoken, I break now in the name of Jesus. Lord, uh, forgive me for rebellion. That would cause my head to be sick from the sole of my feet to the top of my head. Uh, would cause bruises, welts, and raw wounds. I forgive my forefathers uh, for their rebellion in the name of Jesus. Uh, for their alcoholism, their perversion, their addictions, their covenants to false gods. I forgive my forefathers for their drug addictions, for not nurturing their children, for conceiving their children out of wedlock. Lord, forgive me for conceiving my children out of wedlock. Father, I ask you to break the curse of rejection, the curse of shame, the curse of lust, the curse of rebellion that's been on me and my children because of illegitimacy. Lord, I bring every person who's under an illegitimate curse, I bring them into your sanctuary, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I break the power of desolation, numbness. I break the power of stupor. I break the power of devastation over their lives in the name of Jesus. 
Uh, in Jesus' name, I just, uh, Lord, I take him out of the shelter in the vineyard like a cucumber hut. I break the power of the demons that are besieging them in the name of Jesus, opportuning them. In the name of Jesus, forgive me for disobedience to your voice, Lord, and your commandments. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, that would cause you to put on me curses of confusion and rebuke and all I undertake to do. I break that curse in the name of Jesus that would be on me till I'm destroyed to, and me to perish quickly on the count of the evils of my deeds. Lord, forgive me for forsaking you. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to break the curse that I'll be defeated before my enemies, that they'll come against me one way and I'll flee seven ways. I break that curse in the name of Jesus. I break the curse that the Lord will smite me with madness and blindness, craziness, madness, um, insanity, folly, frenzy, uh, blindness, bewilderment of heart in the name of Jesus. I break the curse that I will grope in, at noon as the blind man gropes in darkness and not prosper in my ways, but only be robbed and, and oppressed continually. I break the power of every demon in Jesus' name that has oppressed them, burdened them down with unjust um, uh, impositions or um, restrictions, restraints. I break that in Jesus' name. I break the power of backlash. I break the power of exercise of authority over each person. I break the power that they'll be uh, oppressed, they'll be controlled uh, by states, governments, demons, people, pressures, groups. I break the curse that uh, that uh, that would lay that it, it would lie heavily on my mind, oppress my mind, weigh me down uh, in the name of Jesus, put me down, subdue me, suppress me. I break the power of that in Jesus' name off of every life in the name of Jesus. I break the power of every spirit that would press on them or press against them in the name of Jesus. I break the power of alcoholism. I break the power of addictions, drug addiction. I break the power of gluttony, self-indulgence, overindulgence, hunger, fat, food, sugar. I break all addictions to food, food bondages. I break the curse of Moab, of pride, of arrogance, of heart, of haughty heart in the name of Jesus. I break the power of every spirit that would cause us to be insane, go mad by the sight of what we see. I break the power of blindness. In Jesus' name, off of every person, including myself, I break the power of the demons that have scattered us in the name of Jesus, flogged us in the head, uh, caused us in the name of Jesus to be, um, to be alienated, every spirit of confusion, alienation, loose in the head, spaced out, disconnected. Lord, I reconnect everything that got disconnected in, in little Cameron and all the children's lives in Jesus' name. I break the power in the name of Jesus of every spirit that keeps us from fitting in. All spirits that make us be mixed up, damned, uneasy, confounded, uh, disconnected, loose in the head, divided in the head, memory lapses, switching over. The demons that cause us to switch from personality to personality. All spirits that cause us to be confused, disconnected. Uh, every spirit of memory lapses, blank mind. Uh, has to go now, rejected, has to leave. All spirits that cause us to be on the outside looking in, in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive, I forgive every preacher I've had who's been a hireling and not a shepherd. Lord, and that has scattered me because he didn't teach me about sin. In the name of Jesus, I just renounce that. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of the demons that have driven them away, I poured them out, dispersed them, separated them, removed them to dis different, distant, remote places. In the name of Jesus, the demons that have expended them, dissipated them. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. All spirits that came in through hirelings, in Jesus' name. All spirits that caused the wolf to snatch them and to scatter them. In Jesus' name, I break the power of that. I gather them from all the places where the wolf has scattered them, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, um, I break the curse of rebellion. Uh, Lord, we break soul ties with every person that you've shown us we have a soul tie with. We call back our soul and spirit from them, uh, cleansed 
sanctified and made whole by the blood of Jesus and we send back their souls and spirits to them. We exchange their image for the image of Christ. I bind up their broken heart and I press them out. I bandage them. I soften them with oil in the name of Jesus. Uh, I just break the power of every demon that came in through dysfunctional families, through childhood trauma, through anger, raging parents, through contention and strife, and through parents that rejected uh, every spirit that came in through our parents' anger, uh, harsh treatment, uh, through satanic ritual abuse. We come against the demons that came in through generational slavery. We forgive all the slave people, slave owners that... that uh, we forgive our forefathers for being slave owners, and we forgive our forefathers for uh, uh, abusing. We forgive the slave owners for abusing our forefathers. We command all spirits of mental abuse, physical abuse, spiritual abuse, um, emotional abuse, mental abuse. We command fear that scattered them. All spirits that came in through molestation, through child abuse, through incest, we command you to go. We break generational iniquities of the forefathers all the way back to Adam and Eve. Lord, we take accountability for whatever happened to us in the loins of our forefathers all the way back to Adam and Eve. We ask you to start with Adam and Eve and let your cleansing blood flow down through our bloodline, washing away any ground Satan's had in our life through the generational iniquities of the forefathers, through ritual abuse, uh, the lack of nurturing, uh, the lack of love, the lack of discipline, the lack of guidance, through abandonment, all spirits of an orphan spirit, all spirits that came in through lack of provision, through starvation, through hunger. We forgive our parents for giving us alcohol and drugs when we were children. We forgive our mates for being uh, drug addicts and alcoholics in Jesus' name. All those effects on our children, we cancel all the ne negative effects on our children. In the name of Jesus, we break covenants that have been made to false gods, blood covenants, satanic covenants, we break. We break all occultic rituals. We nullify, make void, cancel every negative, every occultic ritual that our forefathers have ever been put through, that we've ever been put through. In the name of Jesus, we renounce the sin of our forefathers and our own sin. Forgive us for living in lawlessness and iniquities of our forefathers. In the name of Jesus, forgive us for building towers. Forgive us for human flesh. Uh, doing things, human effort, trying to do everything in the flesh instead of trusting you, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you to forgive us for making for ourselves a name. Forgive us, Lord, for, for trying to avoid evil, but yet because we trusted ourselves, we come under the influence of evil. Lord, in Jesus' name, um, forgive me for being your enemy. Being a friend of the world, a lover of the world, and making myself an enemy of, of yours. Uh, in the name of Jesus, all spirits have scattered us through that. In Jesus' name, forgive us for pretending obedience. Forgive us for exalting ourselves and hating you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to forgive us for being unfaithful to you. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to um, forgive, forgive me for um, the lack of spiritual food. I forgive my mother and father for not training me up in the way I should go. I forgive my forefathers for not training my parents up in the way they should go. In the name of Jesus, uh, forgive me for being hungry for spiritual food. I forgive my parents for not feeding me with spiritual food. And I forgive those who camped against me and forgive me for encamping against the righteous that would cause me to get scattered. Lord, in Jesus' name, would you uh, forgive me for delighting in war? God, would you forgive me for doing iniquity that would cause me to get scattered, being lawless, which would cause me to get scattered? I renounce Moab. I renounce his, ha his hardiness, his arrogance. I renounce the incest of Moab in the name of Jesus. I break that curse of incest. I break that curse of pride that would cause me to get scattered in the name of Jesus. Um, in Jesus' name, uh, Lord, I forgive every stupid shepherd I've ever had that's got me scattered. Uh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, I forgive my pastors that they haven't strengthened the the healed the sick or strengthened the disease or healed us or, or healed the broken. Uh, but scattered us instead. I forgive every pastor that's encouraged me to go to the world for answers in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, forgive me for spiritual adultery, spiritual harlotry that would cause Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to swallow me down like a monster and cause me to be scattered. Forgive me for hating your presence, Lord, for not regarding the true priest and not honoring the elders. God, I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus um, for having evil deeds, for committing evil. Lord, I want, to, I want today to be a transformed life so that I will not go back to evil, but every day I'll be closer to you and, and have less breaches, Lord. Forgive me for pride that's caused me to get scattered. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me for uh, going to the world, psychology, drugs, medication, sorcery. Forgive me for sorcery, witchcraft, pharmacia. Lord, I forgive all the, the shepherds I've had who were sleeping. Uh, in Jesus' name, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for wanting to have my ears tickled. Forgive me for accumulating to myself teachers in accordance to my own desire. Uh, God, in Jesus' name, from this day forward, Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask you, Lord, that today as you set before me blessings and, and uh, curses, life and death, uh, I choose life in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you that you'll never leave me or forsake me. I return to you, Lord, and I choose to obey you with all my heart and soul according to all your commandments this day. And, Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you promise you'll restore me from captivity. And I thank you, Lord, for restoration. I thank you for healing. I thank you, Lord. And now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I gather every person in here from all the places where they've been scattered. And I bind them to be one, even as you and your Heavenly Father are one. In Jesus' name, I break the power of fear, doubt, unbelief, worry, anxiety, tension, stress, desire for drugs, a craving for drugs. Lord, I bring every person, pray with me, I forgive my parents that I was born outside of your umbrella, outside of your refuge. And out there where the, the arrows are flying. And I forgive my parents that I was born out there. Now, Lord, I bring them into your sanctuary in the name of Jesus. I bring them onto your potter's wheel. I bring them into the sanctuary of the Lord. And every demon that's left a parent has to leave the kids. In Jesus' name, I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the power of depression. I break the power of pain. I break the power of mourning, moaning, bitterness, resentment, anger, hostility, murder, uh, reviling, slander. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. I break your power over every life in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the power of prayerlessness. I break the power of fear of in, fear to be intimate with God. Every spirit that would cause us to run from God's presence. I forgive my mother. And that, see, that comes from being afraid of your parents that you're running from God. I forgive my parents that I was afraid of them if I was. And Lord, I renounce the lie that I, I should be afraid of you too. That's a lie. Lord, I run into your refuge. Everybody stand up and run into the refuge. Lord, your name is a strong tower and you said the righteous can run into it and are safe. Now run into it. Everybody run into the refuge of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, mighty God. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Lord, give us a peaceful night's sleep. Yes. Lord, I'm a torment. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.